Welcome to our weekly maritime vlog. I'm Corey Ransom with International Maritime Security Associates. We have Bennett, the producer, behind the camera and running the show today. This week, we are going to talk about port state control detentions. On previous episodes, we have talked about port state control and the MOUs around that. And we've also talked about ship detention, arrest, and seizure. On our previous episode about detention, arrest, and seizure, that was looking more at legal and financial implications for those arrests. This time, we're gonna talk about some of the detentions that have resulted from port state control related issues. If you wanna see those previous episodes, we'll have links to both of those down below. As you know, there are a number of port state control regimes around the world. We have the Paris MOU that we've talked about, the Riyadh MOU, the Tokyo MOU, there's a Dakar MOU. There's a number of these MOUs, which what these MOUs do is they make it a lot easier for vessels that have a compliance piece under port state control to be able to comply with port state control regulations in one area. So it makes it a lot easier for vessel operators, hopefully, that they don't have a different regime for every single country they pull into. Here in the United States, the United States is not a member of any specific port state control regime, but has its own regime that it enforces when vessels come into the United States. The first port state control detention piece that I thought would be interesting is actually from here in the United States. The United States has the largest number of cruise ship visits in the entire world. So with that, the Coast Guard is fairly busy when it comes to inspecting cruise ships under the port state control regulations. So the Coast Guard has released a report of the cruise ships that it has inspected and the number of detentions from 2017. There's some interesting figures in here. And as you guys know, I like stats and figures and numbers because to me, it really puts to light actually some of the things that are going on. So in 2017, the US Coast Guard conducted 292 cruise ship examinations. That's a lot of examinations. And out of all of that, only 0.34% received the detention. So that's an extremely low number of detentions when it came to violations against cruise ships. The next item when it comes to port state control and issues is also out of the United States. We had some pretty good data that, that we got a hold of and thought it was pretty interesting. This piece we're gonna look at is what the Coast Guard calls flag state performance. So from 2015 to 2017, the number of detentions with flag states in the Coast Guard has gone from 0.15% down to 0.14. So this indicates that there's been a better performance when it comes to the various flag states. So the top five flag states with issues here in the United States with the biggest detention rates are Bolivia, number one, Tanzania, Togo, Vanuatu, and India. So there's a whole list that the Coast Guard puts out when, it, when you look at detention and detention related issues when it comes to various flags coming into the United States. The next report that we took a look at when it came to detentions, we specifically pulled out one of the class societies. Just at random, this happens to be class NK. To give you an idea from a class society, kind of the average on detention rates for vessels in certain classes. So from class NK, they had 426 reported port state controlled detentions relating to 383 ships, and that was from January to December of 2017, which that represents about 4.5% of the total number of ships in the NK fleet. Detention ratio for the NK fleet in 2017 was roughly about 5%. So I really like the interesting data that the NK puts together. And it's also easy for other ships in the NK to kind of take a look at where the detentions are so that they can put together a much better safety program or make upgrades and changes to their existing safety programs. The number of detentions were the biggest from the Panama flag vessels. The type of vessel were bulk carriers and the biggest as far as from age range were vessels that were from five to 10 years old. The last piece we're gonna to discuss today is specifically under the Paris MOU. 
They've had a concerted enforcement effort when it comes to taking a look at different issues and actions under the MLC or the Maritime Labor Convention. Thought it was pretty interesting as the Maritime Labor Convention comes into force and different port state control MOU regions around the world are really looking to bring this into their overall port state control enforcement. So we just pulled this one out from the Paris one because I thought there was some pretty interesting data in here. So under the Paris MOU, the top violations that they've found over the the past few years and they started doing this in 2014 the number one were wages and then sanitary facilities rec records of seafarers daily hours of work or rest seafarer employment agreements and the cleanliness of the engine room so they put a whole table together when it as far as enforcement action with the MOU so under the MLC and with the enforcement, I still think as we roll this out and the tripartite agreements work together, that there's still a long way to go when it comes to the onboard condition for seafarers. Thanks for joining us this week. We appreciate all the viewers we have. Just to let you guys know, here in the coming weeks, we're going to be doing an episode where we answer viewer questions. So. Start sending us your questions through our social media links, which are detailed in the banner above, also in the comments section below. You can put your questions in the comments to any one of our videos. Make sure you subscribe to our videos so you get notified when we post new videos across all of our topic headings. Also, hit the like button for every one of the videos that you like. If you have any questions outside of the viewer questions when it comes to regulatory compliance, risk management, or maritime security, don't hesitate to reach out to our experts here at IMSA because we're always happy to steer you in the right direction.